Hello and welcome sports fans to this live video streaming event from Table Rock Sports Productions in partnership with our local school districts and outstanding sponsors who make these live presentations possible. I'm Jim McCoy along with Johnny McCoy on the camera coming to you live from the Cascade Christian Pavilion at Cascade Christian High School in Medford, Oregon and we thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Lithia Superstore pregame show powered by Siskiyou Cellular in Southern Oregon and featuring the Coquille Red Devils against the Cascade Christian Challengers in girls basketball. We're pleased to bring you this game on TableRockSports.net and welcome our home and visiting fans to the broadcast. Joe Brett is our executive producer. Our sponsors keep these events free for fans to enjoy. Please let them know you appreciate their support. Please help Table Rock Sports by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And thank you if you already have. <coughs> well, coming into tonight's action, we have a pair of teams up near the top of the standings in the Far West League. The Challengers and the Sutherland Bulldogs currently undefeated in league play. Coquille with one loss on the season, that to Sutherland. But get this, that's their only loss this season. Uh, the Red Devils played at Sutherland back on January 3rd, and Sutherland prevailed by a score of 58-31. to Those of you who follow Far West League basketball know that the Bulldogs are perennial contenders for state titles in girls basketball, so no real huge surprise there. The last time that yours truly had a look at this uh, Red Devils team was back on Valentine's Day last year where the Challengers and Red Devils were playing for a playoff spot. That game, good back and forth battle between the Red Devils and the Challengers, but the Red Devils prevailed in that matchup with some outstanding play in the fourth quarter. It seems like if memory serves me correctly, Holly Viju, key for the Red Devils down the stretch. So we've got a big game tonight. Again, kind of jockeying for position here with a victory here. Then what would happen is, is the Red Devils would end up putting the Challengers in a second place tie and then uh, that would leave Sutherland all alone at the top. As far as the Challengers are concerned, they're riding a five-game winning streak. Their last defeat came in the Crusader Classic up at Salem Academy back in December, a two-point loss to Lakeview. Since then, Challengers started league play, and they've taken on Brookings Harbor, North Valley, Lakeview, St. Mary's, and South Umpqua, and have been victorious in all of those games. The closest, a nine-point decision won by the Challengers. You might kind of say a little bit of vengeance for them as they uh, beat the Honkers at the uh, Cascade Christian Pavilion. But this Coquille team, we're expecting that uh, this will be a real test for Cascade Christian in terms of where they stack up in uh, the Far West League expectation is the way they've been per performing so far this season certainly a playoff berth within their grasp and a, and a Red Devils team that I'm, I'm sure if you were talking to them they just expect to be a, a part of that mix and no worse than second place so we'll get a good solid look at Coquille and see how they measure up against the challengers and it should be a fun game to watch we're going to go ahead and take a break right now. And when we return, we'll get you ready for the start of tonight's matchup. It's the Challengers and the Red Devils. We've got girls action at 530. Then the boys play at 7 o'clock. We'll be back in two minutes on TableRockSports.net. Cellular, new and current customers can get any phone free. So give yourself one. Then, give yourself the gift of not checking it. 
Get any phone free at U.S. Cellular. Visit U.S. Cellular at Siskiyou, Southern Oregon's exclusive authorized agent for U.S. Cellular, now serving Roseburg and Klamath Falls. See SOUSCellular.com for details. Don't stop! Get it! Get it! Don't go for my greatness! It's it's pretty freaking dope, dude. I I love every single day of it. All right, back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion. We're moments away from tip-off, the Challengers and the Red Devils. Challengers in the middle of a home swing right now. They'll have another home matchup on Tuesday night against Glide, and then they go off for a couple of games up to northern Douglas County to take on Sutherland and Douglas. After tonight's matchup, Coquille will be in action again tomorrow night against Lakeview. And that will be over at their place. So they've gone from, uh, you know, the road trip from Coquille to here, not too bad, a couple hours. But that trip to Lakeview is going to be a long one. And uh, looking forward to bringing you this game. This portion of our pregame show is brought to you by the Peak Rewards app, where you can save on gas and goodies. Use the Peak Rewards app to order crispy, crunchy chicken and sides. Choose your favorite items, set a time, and pick up a great dinner ready to serve on the way home. And here I am reading that right around what would ordinarily be dinner time. We'll go ahead and uh, take a quick time out and then... When we return, it'll be time to meet the starting lineups for tonight's game. Coquille and Cascade Christian. The Devils coming in with a 3-1 and one conference record. The Challengers coming in with a conference record of 5-0. and oh, Putting that on the line against an outstanding Red Devils team. We'll be back in two minutes here on TableRockSports.net. My name is Mason Mahaffey. I'm the Solar Post Manager of Oregon, and I'm also a teacher and a coach here in the Rogue Valley. Have you looked into solar panels and it didn't make financial sense? I brought Solar Pros here to Oregon to make it more affordable for working class families to put solar on their home. Solar Pros is purposely beating our competitors' prices by thousands of dollars because we are that serious about saving you money. Solar Pros PNW provides the most comfortable, educational, and personal solar experience in Oregon. Visit our Facebook page at Solar Pros PNW to see all of our projects and all the families that we are helping save money. It's the wrap of the year sales event at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We're stocked up on a great selection of new vehicles from Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and of course Ram trucks. Choose from our great inventory of new 23 Jeep Gladiator and new 24 Grand Cherokee 4x4 models. Or test drive a new 24 Ram 1500 4x4. Shop online today with our online process to calculate your own payment whether it's a lease, finance, or cash payment. Only at the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. It takes meticulous planning. Continuous monitoring. And forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Tap Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. All right, let's go, guys. 15 minutes. Get your stuff. Bye, Mom. 
Have a good day, guys. I don't know what happened. Just next time, go a little slower and figure it out. Okay, I get it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the line. Life is busy. Juggling everything can be overwhelming. We've all been there. So consumed with our own lives that we sometimes forget about what someone else might be going through. Ref, come on! No, ref! There's no contact! I'm straight up! That is a terrible So goal. keep it in perspective. Because we're all hoping for the same thing. To be respected for who we are and what we do. Remember, no ref, okay, ref. no game. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official. But you can only be one. Know your Our national anthem, and here in just a moment, we're going to meet the starting lineups for tonight's ball game. Public addresser, address announcer tonight for the girls' game is Tim O'Sullivan. First to be visiting Red Devils of Tokyo High School. A 5'10 junior, number five, Riley Coyle. A 5'6 junior, number 10, Taylor Kellner. A 5'10 sophomore, number 22, Lexi Lucatero. A 5'9 junior, number 24, Holly Dickyu. And a 5'10 junior, number 42, Jenna Willis. The Red Devils head coach is Marty Stallard. The assistant is Lindsey Nelson. Cascade fans, on your feet and make some noise! Here is the starting five for your Lady Challengers! A junior, number 23, Emma Coates! So there you have the starting lineups for tonight's ball game. The teams gathered now at center court. The haze in the barn, the work's done, and now the teams at center court, challengers in their home white uniforms with purple numerals and gold trim. Coquille in their road reds with white numerals. Great to be here. It'll be interesting to see how a team that has historically been strong like O'Keel and a team that's on the rise like the Challengers see how this one goes. Tip controlled by the Devils. Pass underneath. Works its way in to Lexi Lucatero. Ball tipped out of bounds. Last touch by the Challengers. Lexi will inbound right in front of the Challenger bench. Lucatero works it for Kylie Coyle. High left wing, now Coyle on the low post, double teamed. Tries to work it inside to Jenna Willis. She'll take it over in the corner. Coyle looking to try to make a move against Grace McCauley. Nothing there. They'll bring it back out top. Five on the shot clock. Willis driving. Defense there by the challengers. Actually, that's going to go against Coates. That'll be her first personal foul, and that will send that will send Holly Vigu to the free throw line. Shooting two. 7.26 left to go 
in the first quarter of play. Free throw attempt is good. Coquille taking the early 1-0 lead. Robertson out of backcourt. Picks up her dribble for Coates. Between the circles now. Robertson spins to her left. She'll move around looking for Jones in the low post, but that pass... High and wide, and it will be Coquille Ball. Challengers vastly improved in terms of turning the ball over this year. They only had eight miscues against Lakeview. Challengers try to get out on the break, but Coquille there. Heads up play. Kellner with the basketball. And it ends up out of bounds. The Challengers who will face backcourt pressure, gets set to inbound. Jones to Izzy McCauley. One of the good things about this challenger team, they do have a number of good ball handlers. Coates feeds McCauley on the way to the hoop, but she can't get it to stick. Rebound taken by Coyle. Coyle will outlet now for Holly Viju. Lucatero attempts an entry pass into the paint, and it is tipped out of bounds by the challengers. So a minute and a half into the ball game, and it's just a one nothing lead. Willis will miss the shot. Coyle will take an attempt, and the challengers get the rebound. Jones rolls out of bounds, and it'll be Coquille Ball. Looks like here we got some adrenaline flowing in this ball game and the challengers maybe a little too much excitement behind the ball handling and passing. Challenger defense though up to its usual shot. The defense was good there, but making the play, Holly Viju makes it a three nothing ball game. Jones passes, Coates makes a move to the hoop. Shot hard off the glass, but we have a whistle underneath. Coquille foul. Jenna Willis incurs her first personal of the ball game. First team foul for the Red Devils. And at the free throw line, Emma Coates. First free throw attempt, nothing but net. Challengers with their first point of the evening with 5.51 to go in the first. Second attempt on its way. That'll rim out, but Robertson is there on the glass. Works it for Jones. Jones, quick look. Her shot just a little bit short. And the Devils take it away. Backcourt pressure by the Challengers. And for those of you who haven't seen this team so far, that's their stock and trade. That's what uh, this team has built around is full court pressure and defense. And dare we say, it's made a huge difference in terms of the team's success. McCauley inbounds to her cousin. Izzy with it. Feeds inside for Jones. And she kisses it off the window for two to tie the game. Screens in the backcourt. You can tell this Red Devil team prepared for the press. They'll try to feed it inside. Challengers with the steal. Coquille doing a good job getting back defensively. Robertson, she does have some range. And she buries it. She had six, seven, I should say, early on Tuesday night. So she gives the challengers a three-point lead and a turnover by Coquille. Into the ball game for the Red Devils. Number two is Emmy Weyerbaugh. Jones with the inbound. And again, Coquille with some pressure. Grace McCauley starts to drive. Coates bounce pass back to Robertson. Izzy tried to work it inside, tipped away. Robertson there kicks it out for Grace. Robertson moving to her right, starts to try to make a move. Izzy McCauley, she buries it. Challengers leading score at 18 and a half a game. 
gives Cascade Christian a six-point lead. Willis swings it high left wing for Viju. Now for Izzy Trujillo, who's in the ball game. So some early substitutions. Willis there, she knocks it down, drawing her team within four. So Coach Stollard going to his bench early in the ball game, about halfway through the first quarter of play. Robertson going to shoot, and she gets the next one. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if that wasn't it, the next one will be that she has 100 career threes. Challenger basketball, they're up by seven. Coach Stallard chatting with Kellner as she goes to sit down. Robertson working against Salazar, who's in the ball game. So we've seen a couple early substitutions. Grace with the basketball. Robertson feeds it low post for Jones. She'll make a move. They'll count the basket and one. Jordan Jones, who hit for double figures on Wednesday night against South Umpqua. She's got it going early here. Three-point play opportunity. She capitalizes. I can say it now that the shooting's done but they are a good free throw shooting team most of the time. Going quickly the other way. Turnover by Coquille. I'll feed it for McCauley. McCauley starts a drive. We have a whistle out on the wing. That's going to go against Jenna Willis. That'll be her third personal. Coyle will return as the 5'10 junior gets an early foul trouble. Izzy with the ball. Robertson pulls up, shoots in and out. Jones with the offensive rebound. Can't finish. And there's Coyle with the rebound. Quickly up the floor they go, and I'm not sure who was supposed to be in the back on that, but they missed it. And the Red Devils capitalize. Luca Terro there with her first bucket of the ball game. Challengers turn over the basketball. And then McCauley tries to tip it away. And Salazar with her first field goal draws the Red Devils within six. So in a game of runs right now, Coquille on the start of a run with 2.19 to go on the first. Inbound, Jones. Jones going to make a move off the window. And she has seven in the ball game. Challenge her lead back up to eight. Steal by McCauley. And it ends up bouncing... Kind of one of those passes where it was just a little too low. Robertson tries to short hop it, but it ends up bouncing out of bounds. Angelica Arce making her first appearance of the night. Challenger lead is eight. So for Cascade, that's their first substitution of the ball game. Out of the corner, lefty jumper. Misses its target. There's Grace McCauley with it out of backcourt. Jones. Izzy McCauley. Back to Jones. Shot a little bit long. It just seemed like she wasn't completely gathered there. And ball ends up going out of bounds. And the Red Devils will get it back. 137 left to go. Taking the inbound is Salazar up the floor. And a travel call. Wait a minute. Is 
So a couple of, it looks like we have conflicting calls here. And I think there was a travel, and then maybe perhaps after the travel, there may have been a foul committed by the challengers. But the travel came first. That'll be challenger ball. Well, that'll be our story, and we're sticking to it. Emma Coates with it for Jones. Jones drives. Arce bounce pass to Jones, but it is broken up. Tried to force that one into traffic. Coates with a near steal there. Emma whistled for the personal foul for the challengers. That will be their second team foul. Actually, they're going to go. They give that to Arce. Arce with five points against South Umqua, and then on Saturday against St. Mary's, seven points off the challenger bench. Salazar with it. Up top to Izzy Trujillo. Guard to guard exchange, drive into the paint. The lefty shot, no good. Jones up the floor to Arce. Arce moves to the hoop, and she lays it up and in. Arce with her first field goal of the ball game. 35 seconds left to go. Steal by Jones. Arce there. She makes a move to the hoop, and she's fouled. That'll send her to the free throw line. Nice to see a good crowd in attendance here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion. Good mix of Challenger fans, but I also see Coquille well represented here. Arce. First attempt is good. Challengers cross the 20 point hurdle. Coyle coming out of the ball game, and Emmy Weyerbaugh comes in. The foul was called against Holly Viju. That'll be her first personal. Second attempt. Nothing but net. 21-9 ball game. Out of backcourt. Wirebaugh. Pass broken up. Arce there. Now to Izzy McCauley. Izzy up the floor to Jones. And she banks it home. 23-9 challenger lead. And a steal by Izzy. McCauley out of backcourt. Has it taken back, though. Holly Viju making the play. Ball loose on the floor. The shot will not count. And that will end the first quarter of play. What a frantic first quarter. And the challengers on your John L. Scott scoreboard. You see them leading 23-9. We'll be back in one minute here on Table Rock Sports. After my injury, I couldn't drive anymore. I had never used the bus and had no idea where to start. RVTD's travel trainer showed me the way from setting up my UMO account to understanding the routes and transfers. Now, I'm a pro, and I help others on the bus every day. Hey, thanks, Mike, for showing me how to ride. RVTD has really opened up a whole new life for me. Bill's Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. Back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, we're getting ready to start this second quarter of play. Leading score of the game for Cascade Christian, Jordan Jones has nine. Viju leads the Red Devils with three. Coates with the basketball, tries to drive, loses it. We've got a tie-up. First jump ball called of the game. And on the alternating possession, it'll be Coquille Ball. Fans, it's time to tune in to the new sports voice in Southern Oregon, the A Sports Radio, AM 1300 and 107.9 FM. Featuring the Visa Network, the Rich Eisen Show, NFL games, and local and regional coverage, the Ace Sports Radio. Ball tipped out of bounds, last touched by Cascade Christian. Ace. 
Feed down into the post for Lucatero. She'll kick it out. And Arce trying to fight for it. Can't quite a good, good grip on it. Now the lefty jumper. Vigu. She's got six in the game. And the challenger lead is now 11. Backcourt pressure by the Red Devils. Robertson with it. Drives, kicks it out for Coates. And she knocks down the three. She's got a good mid-range shot, but I don't know we see her shoot too many threes, but she picked a good spot, got a good look, and knocked it down. Making her first appearance of the night, Taylor Fullen comes into the ball game. She'll typically kind of come in and be that dirty work type player that kind of does all the little things in the game. Meanwhile, it is Trujillo with the basketball. Feed at low post for Lucatero. She makes a move, gets position on the defender, but can't knock it down. Izzy McCauley to Robertson. She loses the handle on it. And out of bounds, it'll go. Last touched by the Red Devils. And the challengers will inbound along their baseline. Fullen taking care of the inbound. Fullen looking out high for Izzy McCauley. And we'll have a foul called against Coquille. So Izzy Trujillo, the 5'4 junior, whistled for the personal. Shot a little bit short there. Steal by Robertson. And she gets it to go. Tim the Robertson. She's got eight in the ball game. And this game's got to be a good confidence builder for her. She's always great ball handler. Probably the best ball handler on the team. Dogged defender. Uh, historically a good, strong three-point shooter, but uh, she's been on a little bit of a cold streak this year, so it's good to see her getting some points on the board because you know you gotta, you're going to need that to help take some of the focus off of Izzy and off of Jordan. We're going to take a 30-second timeout and be right back here on the Table Rock Sports Network. Your daily adventures with Pinnacle 365. Enjoy a little morning motivation. Freshly ground coffee, brewed from bean to cup in no time at all. Plus, with your Peak Rewards app, you'll save at least 16 cents a gallon at the pumps so you can travel further for less in your daily adventures. Score even more savings for the road when you purchase your favorites, like Nature Valley bars, soft baked muffins, Red Bull, vitamin water, perfect bars, and watch the savings and your day accelerate. Great adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Here at the Pavilion, the Challengers up by 16 here in the middle of the second quarter. Challengers with nine from Jones, eight from Robertson. McCauley, the leading scorer over the season for Cascade, with just three on pretty much one attempt. At the free throw line, Robertson. Free throw attempt, just a little bit short. And a tie up in the corner. It'll be Cascade Christian Ball. Solar Pros and owner Mason Mahaffey invite you to learn how you can save thousands on solar panels installation for your home. Visit Solar Pros Facebook page to learn more. Search Facebook Solar Pros PNW. Over in the corner, Robertson. Coats up top. Guard to guard exchange. Jones moving up into the high post. Coates now will drive to the hoop, loses the handle on it. And it'll be taken away with the basketball is Salazar. She shakes the defense. Viju thinking about a three there. She'll drive the runner. Misses its target. Rebound by Coates. Coates quickly up the floor. Robertson! And she's in double figures.
Ball quickly up the floor. Salazar. Big U. Down on the low post. They try to kick it out. Tipping it away is Robertson. Grace McCauley will return to the game. And Jordan Jones, who has eight, will take a well-deserved breather. Riju and shooting from long distance in and out for Trujillo. Rebound by the Challengers. Little collision. Holly Vigu, junior guard. That is her second personal foul. And third team foul in the quarter for the Red Devils. Down in the corner, Coach. She's double teamed. Ball lost out of bounds. It'll be double basketball. Trujillo. Lucatero. Back to Trujillo. Vigu moving to the hoop. Good defense by the challengers, but a takeaway by Lucatero. Shooting from the top of the key. Shot misses. Kellner with the attempt. Holly Vigu. She leads the Devils with nine in the ball game, and so you can see she's getting it fired up now. Robertson with the runner, her shot short. Holly with the rebound, quickly up the floor, Kellner. Kellner pulls up, low post to Lucatero, and it's good. Red Devils on a mini run right here. Challengers led by as many as 18, but now it is a 13-point lead. And I don't know that any lead is safe at this juncture of the game, given the caliber of the Red Devils. Izzy McCauley on the drive. Trujillo whistled for her third personal. Substitutions into the ball game. Jordan Jones coming back in along with Angelica Arce. Also making her first appearance tonight. One of two challenger seniors, Brooke Aikens. Okay, not real sure what's going on here, and I'm not even going to try to speculate. But play is about ready to resume. Kellner in the ball game with Coyle, Trujillo, Lucatero. And Salazar. Arce with the basketball. Up top it goes, just a little bit too high. Grace McCauley there with the hustle to run it down. Works it for Izzy. Jones to a cutting McCauley. Jones drives. That may have been a situation where Jones would have just been better served. Again, appreciate the unselfishness there, but uh, I believe that she had the move there and would have been successful on the attempt had she gone through with that. Challenger lead 13. Kellner feeds it inside. Lucatero loses the handle on it. And it'll be Challenger basketball on the turnover. Out of backcourt, Izzy McCauley, the crater transfer. Also plays volleyball. Akins with it in the corner. And... A turnover. Viju gets past the defender, but she's whistled for the travel. Holly a little unsure about that one. 
Back in the ball game for the challengers, Emma Coates. And 23's got the basketball. Up past the timeline at midcourt, Jones. Bounce pass, Grace McCauley runs to the hoop. Misses the shot. Out of bounds, it'll be Coquille basketball. So slowly but surely, the Red Devils trying to work their way back into the ball game. Ball quickly up the floor for Kellner. Try to feed it to the low post. Breaking it up is Grace McCauley. And we got a foul against the challengers. Grace whistled for her first personal foul of the ball game. For the challengers in the second quarter, that is their first team foul. Red Devils with four. Inbounding. Kellner has it. Viju feeds it to the high post, making a move. Lucatero, her shot in and out. Arce with the basketball. Coates tries to run it down. Challengers just getting a little sloppy here in the second, and you just want to make sure that you play 32 minutes of good basketball. Because if you're not careful, a good team like O'Keele is going to find themselves right back in it if you let off the gas. Probably my well does statement of the day. Kellner with the shot, off, looks like it was off the side of the backboard. Viju runs it down, seems like she's everywhere. Feeds it for Lucatero. And we have a foul called on the play. That'll go against Lucatero. You can kind of see just the way that Jones kind of went backward on that. Those plays maybe sometimes have a way of looking a little more intense than they really are, but uh, uh, call against because it's player control, and the challengers turn it over. And we have a travel call against Coquille. So both these teams a little loosey-goosey here in this quarter. And Coach Robertson going to talk things over with his charges. Challengers lead by 13 with 150 to go in the quarter. We'll be right back. Thanks for the ride. I'll see you after the game. Hey, um... Dear Katie, I've been your number one fan since I watched your first game all those years ago, and I still love watching you play. But I wanted to see you win so badly that my competitive nature got the best of me. I lost track of what's important. I thought I was supporting you, but I was really just embarrassing you. I'm not your coach, and I'm not an official. I forgot my role. I'm your parent, and you deserve better. From here on, I promise to keep my emotions under control. I'll cheer for you and all the other players, no matter the score, no matter the outcome. Thank you for sharing with me how I can do a better job of supporting you, your team, your coaches, and the sports you love. Still your number one fan. Love, Dad. Second quarter, Challengers lead by 13. Robertson, Izzy McCauley, and with a foul called against Coquille. I think one of the problems they're going to find themselves with is that they now are beginning to get a number of players that are edging their way up into foul trouble. Coyle, though, just her first personal of the ball game. Sixteen foul of the quarter, so that'll send Izzy McCauley to the free throw line. First free throw attempt, just we tad short. She's got three in the game. She'll have a second look with 144 to go in the half. And that one catches about every portion of the rim and goes down. She's got four in the game. 
and the challenger lead is 14. Vidu out of backcourt. A Kellner. And they almost get behind the defense, but the challengers break it up. Timna Robertson running it down. Feeds it over for Jones. Out of backcourt, driving to the hoop. Can't get it to go. And the challengers get it back. Izzy McCauley, three on two break. But the basketball, Coates, misses the shot. Trying to swipe at the ball and trying to get it back is McCauley, but Bijou is there. Like I said, it seems like every loose ball, she's there. And a block by Grace. You don't see a lot of those in girls' basketball, and you especially don't see it with a team that is a little bit in the vertically challenged department, such as the challengers are, but Grace making a good play on the ball. Out of bounds, however. Vijo with the inbound. Coyle swings it for Kellner. Low post. Coyle working against Jones. Can't make the shot. There to fight for the rebound is Jones. Jones quickly up the floor. Robertson with it, moving to her left. Bounce pass to Izzy McCauley. Robertson, skip pass for Jones. Jones drives to the hoop. And a foul called against Coquille. Foul called against Taylor Kellner, the junior guard. Her first personal foul. Jones, first free throw attempt in and out. 40.9 to go here in the half. Challenger lead is 14. Second attempt is on its way. That one, nothing but net. Jones has 10 in the ball game and a near steal by Izzy McCauley. It'll be Coquille basketball. Lucatero finds Vigu. Moves to her left, goes behind the back. Kellner, high out on the left wing. Just to the right of challenger coach Jeff Robertson. Vigu guarded by Jones. Gets a little screen from Lucatero. Back up top they go. Ten on the shot clock. And turnover. And really, that's been the secret sauce of the challengers all season long, and no different in this half. It's their defense that makes it happen, the key to their success. Coates out of backcourt. Izzy McCauley, her shot off the window, no good. Time running out on the first half of play. And it is halftime. Before or after the game, it's a great time to visit Dutch Bros and enjoy your favorite beverage. Dutch Love Day is coming in February where $1 from every drink is donated back to local organizations. We'll take a quick time out, and when we return, we'll have the Medford Parks and Recreation Halftime Report. That's coming up here on TableRockSports.net. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Pick it up. Let's go. Come on. Defense. Defense. What am I teaching you at home? Has this kid played before? Shoot it. Oh. Ah. Come on, ref. Open your eyes. Can't you see out there? So, which one's your kid? The referee. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official. But you can only be one. Know your role. Game day. 
or a family get-together. Sherm's has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount grocery store. Your game day adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Kick off your day with some morning motivation. Then add some crunch to your game day with mouthwatering crispy crunchy chicken featuring the chicken crunch box, tenders crunch box, and introducing a contender for best chicken sandwich in the West, the Big Cluck. But wait, here's the real MVP move. Download and use the Peak Rewards app and save big on fuel every day with in-store purchases. Fuel your day, fuel your fun. Pinnacle 365. Whether it's game day or a family get-together, Sherm's has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount. Your halftime report brought to you by the Medford Parks and Recreation Department. And did you know that the city of Medford is the largest provider of community recreation classes, programs, and sports leagues in Southern Oregon? Check out the program guide for hundreds of offerings at playmedford.com. Well, quite a first half. The uh, Red Devils coming in with an overall record of 15-1 and on the season. And just one loss in league play coming against a Sutherland team that is always tough. But the challengers jumped out early. Tim the Robertson, Jordan Jones, the old one-two punch for the challengers doing its job. And uh, they're getting opportunities in the transition game. Also Jones with moves in the low post triggering things. But really the secret, as it always is with the challengers, if they're going to succeed, it's going to come from the defensive end. And the challenger defense has done a great job of flustering the Red Devils. A lot of early turnovers in the ball game. And another challenge for Coquille will be the fact that they've got a number of players in foul trouble. Izzy Trujillo has three. Willis has three. Vigu, who would, uh, the loss of her on the team would be a huge for the Red Devils, but uh, right now at two, she's okay if she can keep from picking up a third quickly. Recapping the scoring from the first half, first of all, looking at the scorebook for the Red Devils, Viju with nine points to Lee Coquille. Lucatero has four in the ball game. Willis has a bucket, and Salazar has two for the Red Devils. For the Challengers, their scorebook looks a little something like this. Jordan Jones with 10 in the ball game. Tim the Robertson with 9 for Cascade. Izzy McCauley has 4. Angelica Arce with 4 off the Challenger bench. And Emma Coates with 4. Foul trouble for the Challengers? Really not any. They have three players with one personal foul, so they're in outstanding shape where that's concerned, and that'll probably bode well for Cascade, given the fact that you know whatever Coach Stollard has in his satchel to right the ship, they're going to try to employ that in the second half, and uh, this Red Devil team will not be going away quietly. Meanwhile, Cascade trying to work their way into the rarefied air of being 6-0 in the Far West League. And I don't know if we can go back to a time where the challengers were off to that hot a start. We found where 12 years ago on that challenger squad that ended up finishing third under the state in the state when Marvin Denman was coaching the team back in the days of the Martinez sisters and uh, some other players like that. That's about how far you have to go back. I think that they started out 4 0 in the league before they ended up incurring their first loss. So, this challenger team working on making some history and looking good so far. Stick around, we've got more coming your way. Excitement is here for the opening of Rogue X. The Aquatics and Events Center awaits you 
with two indoor swim goals and water slides. The event center will host basketball and volleyball leagues and tournaments and other indoor events. Visit playmedford.com or check your activities guide to learn more about Rogue Credit Union Community Complex, Rogue X. We'll take a two-minute timeout, and we'll get ready for the start of the second half here on TableRockSports.net. Diverse venues? We got them. Year-round sports access? You bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding? Check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Okay, you know how people complain about how Dutch Bros workers are like, too nice, too hyper, compliment you too much, whatever. Maybe you're not nice enough. Maybe you need to get a little Dutch Bros in here. Discover the West Coast destination for those seeking more. More sunny days, more athletic facilities, more outdoor adventures, more to do during downtime. Medford is your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. It's game day for a family get together. Sherm's has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount grocery store. Your game day adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Kick off your day with some morning motivation. Then add some crunch to your game day with mouthwatering crispy crunchy chicken featuring the chicken crunch box, tenders crunch box, and introducing a contender for best chicken sandwich in the West, the Big Cluck. But wait, here's the real MVP move. Download and use the Peak Rewards app and save big on fuel every day with in-store purchases. Fuel your day, fuel your fun. Pinnacle 365. Whether it's game day or a family get-together, Sherm's has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount. The Medford Parks and Recreation Department helps sponsor our winter sports coverage, swim lessons, basketball and volleyball leagues, a splash pad and water slides, are all there at Rogue X, located at the Howard Memorial Sports Park. You can reserve birthday rooms and packages with sports and splashing. This has been the Medford Parks and Recreation Halftime Show. The buzzer sounds, and both teams getting ready to retake the floor. Challengers, who led by as many as 18 in the ball game. The Red Devils kind of trying to work their way back in it, but uh, now the lead for Cascade back at 15. And I believe if I look to my left, I see uh, Micah Johnson sighting. Haven't seen him in quite a long time. Long time team manager and assistant coach for the Challengers. Or as he was lovingly nicknamed, the... Director of Basketball Operations. Coquille opening the second half with the basketball. Viju is definitely the one you got to keep your eye on in terms of really trying to amp up the scoring load. Willis back in the ball game. She had three fouls in the first half. And trying to get it in the corner. And it is Coquille basketball. Coquille inbounding underneath their own basket. Up top, Lucatero. 12 seconds left to go on the shot clock. Coyle with it, working against Jones. She tries a little left-handed move, and she gets it to fall. Kylie Coyle with her first bucket of the ball game. Challengers. Working on an answer. Jones with it. Out high. Right at the top of the key. Jones. Moves to her left. Back to Robertson. Kicks it out. Izzy McCauley. Her shot just a little bit long. 
Emma Coates tips it out. And I believe that will be Coquille basketball, and it is. So we're one minute into the third quarter of play. Luca Taro, right in front of the Coquille bench. Guard to guard exchange, now to Coyle. Now Kellner from downtown, her shot rims off. Rebound by Grace. Quickly up the floor to her cousin Izzy. She'll make a move to the hoop. The shot, no good. Holly with the basketball for Coquille. Cross court pass for Kellner. They'll swing it around the horn to Lucatero. And a three second violation against Coquille. Well, Chowsers will get it back, and looks like we'll have a little bit of basically half-court pressure by Coquille. Izzy's going to pull up and shoot. Her shot, no good. Jones tries to run down the rebound. They'll call Coble. Coyle, I should say, for the push. Kylie Coyle, that'll be her second personal. First team foul of the half for the Red Devils. Should say quarter now with the new rules. Coates kicks it out. Jones from three, her shot long. Robertson and there in traffic is Emma Coates. Swinging around, Izzy McCauley. She buries it. Izzy with four in the first half, gets a triple there, her first of the ball, actually her second of the ball game. Jones. Working against Kellner, Grace McCauley, Timna Robertson, low post for Jones, kicks it out, Emma Coates with a mid-range shot, and she knocks it down. She's right at home on that baseline at about 15 feet, and she puts the challengers up by 18. Coates with six in the game. Vigu with the basketball, Kellner. Cross-court pass broken up by Grace McCauley. Anticipated that well. Quickly up the floor, Izzy McCauley. Now for Coates. Off the window for two. Challenger lead with their biggest lead of the game at 39-19. 4.58 left to go on the third. And we have a 60-second timeout called by Coquille. We will take out a timeout ourselves and we'll be right back after these messages on TableRockSports.net. Your daily adventures with Pinnacle 365. Enjoy a little morning motivation. Freshly ground coffee, brewed from bean to cup in no time at all. Plus, with your Peak Rewards app, you'll save at least 16 cents a gallon at the pumps so you can travel further for less in your daily adventures. Score even more savings for the road when you purchase your favorites, like Nature Valley bars, soft-baked muffins, Red Bull, vitamin water, perfect bars, and watch the savings and your day accelerate. Great adventures start at Pinnacle 365. You'll want to do that soon. 4.56 to go, and a full timeout called. This is going to be an opportunity to remind you that today's game is brought to you by Tap Rock Northwest Bar and Grill in Grants Pass, Elmer's Restaurants of Medford, and the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role campaign, promoting respectful behavior at youth sporting events. Coquille will come out with Coyle, Kellner, Vigu, Jenna Willis, and Lexi Lucatero. Willis, low post to Coyle, or shot a little bit short. Put back attempt, and it'll be a jump ball called. And on the tie up, the alternating possession goes the way of the challengers. Robertson out of the challenger backcourt. Timna to Emma Coates to Jones in the high post. Swing it for Izzy McCauley. One of the nice things about the challengers this year, they've been really solid in terms of quick ball movement, but they lose it there. Robertson tries to make a play for the ball, can't get it. Coyle will feed it down low. Nice pass. 
Coyle to Willis. Willis has four in the ball game. 39-21 with 4.15 left to go in the third. Izzy McCauley, her shot a little bit long from three-point range. Coyle. And a foul in the backcourt. Some contact there between Coates and Coyle. And actually, that's going to be called on Grace McCauley, her second personal. Robertson comes out of the ball game. Taylor Fullen. We see her playing ball, soccer player, in the fall. Comes off the challenger bench to give Robertson a breather. Losing the basketball is Tr Trujillo. And you can see they're trying to make a play on the ball, trying to tie it up, but ends up committing a foul in the process. That'll go against Coates. That'll be her second personal. Kellner taking the inbound. Lucatero. Vigu. Willis. Back up top. Swing it around. Inside they go. Lucatero, her shot. Just off the glass. And we get a tie up there. Alternating possession goes to Coquille. Inbounding will be Holly Vigu. Kellner makes a move to her right, drives across the paint. Vigu, the lefty jumper, is no good. Izzy McCauley with the rebound. Outlets for Jones. A lot of interchangeable parts on this challenger team. Izzy making a drive to the hoop. And we'll have a whistle and a foul called against the Red Devils. For Willis, that's her fourth personal foul. Second team for Coquille. Jones making a drive. It almost looked like she was trying to bounce it off the leg of Lucatero, whatever the case may be. Red Devils secure it on the turnover. Lucatero to Vigu. Kellner looking along the baseline. And Willis with it. Bounce pass. Big U. Try to feed it down the low post. Lucatero shot to kick it back out. And knocking down the triple. Kellner. Kellner makes it a 15 point game. Jones out of the backcourt. Now, the Challengers have been successful in stealing the ball against the Red Devils. You'd think they would know not to do that where the Red Devils can break it up. Robertson back in the ball game. So she's in along with Grace McCauley, Izzy McCauley, Jordan Jones, and Taylor Folan. Robertson feeds it. Izzy, Izzy making a move to the hoop. The little runner can't connect. Red Devils out of backcourt. Holly with it now, quickly up the floor. Now out to Willis. Willis dumps it down low. Shot misses. Put back attempt by Wirebaugh. And Challengers turn over the basketball. Not real fond of those passes along the sideline. I've seen it twice now where Coquille has taken the ball away. Vigu working against Izzy McCauley. Challengers has been doing a good, good job of limiting her opportunities. They'll kick it out. The shot short by Wirebaugh to try to save it, but it was already out of bounds. And it'll be Challenger basketball. 137 left to go in the third quarter of play. Jones, Izzy McCauley, and a challenger turnover against the Red Devil Press. Foul, 
Isabel McCauley whistled for her first personal foul of the ball game. She'll come out. Angelica Arce will come in. Challengers with three team fouls in the quarter. And Coquille with two. Inbound, Lucatero to Trujillo. Vigu, her shot rims off. Running it down, good hustle there by Salazar. Salazar looking inside, working against Robertson. Vigu to Lucatero. And there, almost breaking it up. Still Grace McCauley fighting for the basketball. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Vigu has an opening. But can't get it to stay down. Grace McCauley with the basketball. And the challengers. Foul called against Cascade Christian. I believe that's going to be on Grace McCauley. She's got three in the ball game. Isabel McCauley returns as her cousin goes out. 51 seconds left to go in the third. Trujillo in the corner. Salazar around the horn it goes to Vigu. Wirebaugh with a shot short. Jones with the rebound. Up the floor to Izzy McCauley. So a lot of active hands defensively by Coquille. Jordan Jones! And she knocks it down. She's got 12 in the game. Breaks a long dry spell for the challengers. A little too much mustard on the fastball there out of the post. And Cascade Christian will get it back with 18 seconds left to go in the quarter. Lucatero will come out of the ball game. Checking in is Nelson, steal by Coquille. <laughs> Foul in the act of shooting. Angelica Arce whistled for her second personal foul at the free throw line. Holly Viju. First attempt, off to the right. She's got nine in the game to lead the Red Devils. Second attempt, that one's good. Jones, working her way out of backcourt. Three seconds left to go in the quarter. And that will end the third quarter of play. A wild and crazy one it was. Challengers with a 16-point lead. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout on TableRockSports.net. Venture start at Pinnacle 365. Accelerate your day with morning motivation. Freshly ground, swiftly brewed from fresh bean to cup in no time at all. And now we're here for your daily dinner adventures. Introducing crispy, crunchy chicken online ordering. Mouthwatering crispy, crunchy chicken for dinner made deliciously easy. Just open the app or visit the website, select a pickup time, choose from your favorites, and your crispy, crunchy chicken will be prepared hot and fresh. Make dinner a breeze at Pinnacle 365. It's the the wrap up the year sales event at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We're stocked up on a great selection of new vehicles from Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and of course Ram trucks. Choose from our great inventory of new 23 Jeep Gladiator and new 24 Grand Cherokee 4x4 models. Or test drive a new 24 Ram 1500 4x4. Shop online today with our online process to calculate your own payment, whether it's a lease, finance, or cash payment. Only at the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. Start of the fourth quarter, challenger basketball. Izzy McCauley, Timna Robertson. Challenger starters back in the lineup. Jones in the high post, kicks it out for Coates. Coates starts to drive, gives it back up for Jones. Jones going to drive, loses control of it. 
trying to run it down is Izzy McCauley, and the challengers continue to be a little shaky in the ball handling department. Was bragging on their improved ball handling earlier tonight, and if there's been one place, and of course, give, credit, give some credit to the Coquille defense that, that uh, they are present and contesting everything, and so uh, it's making a difference. Robertson with the basketball. And we'll have a whistle against Coquille. Holly Viju with her third personal foul of the ball game. First team foul. And you remember the new rules that they reset team fouls every quarter. Coates with a short look. Hits the back iron and falls. Coates with eight in the game. With the basketball. Nelson in the ball game. Viju up top. Around the horn it goes to Trujillo. I'll swing it around. Willis guarded by Izzy, uh, by Grace McCauley. Down on the corner, Wirebaugh. They'll kick it back out. Viju thought about a shot. Pulls up at the corner of the free throw line. And they're shooting Wirebaugh. Her shot rolls off. McCauley with the rebound. Grace out of backcourt. To Jones. Jones driving with the basketball. A little turnaround, two. Jones with 14 in the ball game, leading all scorers. 6.15 to go. Bounce pass up the floor. Down low. Wire ball off the window as Coquille gets their first bucket of the fourth quarter. Six minutes left to go in the ball game. Backcourt pressure. Up the floor, Coates. And a 10-second violation against the Challengers. Took just a little bit too long there. Kind of have to work a little bit on clock awareness, but that's, that's a rare one. I think that's been the first I've seen called against the Challengers this year. Getting set to check in for the Challengers, May Ferreira. Sophomore guard into the ball game. Wearing number 12, Robertson. We'll have a quick seat. Viju with the basketball. Lucatero, Trujillo. Viju has enough room she's going to shoot. Good look there. Can't get it to fall. And it'll be challenger basketball. And again, the Red Devils with backcourt pressure. Izzy McCauley drives. Grace McCauley with it. And she banks it home. Grace McCauley with her first bucket of the ball game. She's been great on the glass, though. Viju to Kellner. Try to swing it low post, and it's broken up by Jones. Challenger defense on the money tonight. Izzy McCauley with the basketball to Jones around the horn. Grace McCauley. Emma Coates, her shot rims off. Ferrero with the weak side rebound. Izzy will try one. Shot a little bit off to the left. Coates had it for a moment. Grace McCauley there. And the Challengers with a fresh clock. Ferrero will shoot. Her shot a little bit long. And there is Grace McCauley off of the deflection. And with 4.43 left to go, the challengers will inbound. We have foul called against Viju. That'll be her fourth of the ball game. Jones will shoot from downtown. And that'll be a long two. Jones with 16 on the night. Swinging around the horn, Trujillo. Try to work at high post for Willis. We'll lose the handle on the ball there in traffic is May Ferreira. 
Jones past midcourt. Ferreira. They'll work it into the low post. Taken away. There is Kellner. But it is stolen by Coates. Coates. Jones. Izzy McCauley. Challengers on the break. And Izzy's got nine on the game. Trujillo shoots, and the 15-footer is good. Izzy Trujillo. Now Ferreira. Coates around the horn to Jones. Jones going to drive, kick it out for Ferreira. Screen from Izzy. May takes the skip pass. Her older sister, Sophie, an assistant coach. Izzy McCauley, she's in double figures. Feed. Nice move to the hoop there by Luca Taro. Luca Taro was six in the ball game. And a timeout called by Cascade Christian. And this is a full timeout, so we will pause, recognize our sponsors, and we'll be right back. All right, let's go, guys. 15 minutes. Get your stuff. Bye, Mom. Have a good day, guys. I don't know what happened. Just next time, go a little slower. Okay, I get it. What you're going to do is you're going to take the line. Life is busy. Juggling everything can be overwhelming. We've all been there. So consumed with our own lives that we sometimes forget about what someone else might be going through. Ref, come on! No, ref! There's no contact! I'm straight up! That is a terrible So goal. keep it in perspective, because we're all hoping for the same thing, to be respected for who we are and what we do. Remember, no ref, no game. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official, but you can only be one. Know your... Back at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, challengers leading with 243 left to go in the ball game. Brooke Aikens returns for Cascade. Jones. Robertson has a look. The shot in and out. Viju going the other way. Open path to the hoop. Basketball out of bounds. Last touch by the challengers. Viju will inbound underneath the Red Devil basket. Nelson back in the ball game. Cross court pass to Salazar. Guarded by Robertson. Into the ball game is Oakley Johnson. Bijou shot in and out. Rebound by Jones. She's got over 500 in her basketball career at Cascade Christian. And she still has another year to go. Look inside. Morgan Samhammer in the ball game. Tried to get her the pass and tipped away by Coquille. So both coaches emptying out their respective benches. Jones making a move to the hoop. Izzy McCauley, her shot short. There with the basketball, Brooke Aikens. Jones drives. Izzy McCauley. Shot way short from three. It looks like uh, Red Devil Defender got their hand on it. Salazar quickly up the floor to Trujillo. And kick it out. And Salazar from downtown. The shot misses. Ball loose on the floor. Morgan Samhammer there. And on the jump ball, alternating possession to the Red Devils. 
Checking into the ball game for the challengers, Emma Coates, Angelica Arce, and Taylor Folan, Robertson, Izzy McCauley, and Jordan Jones come out to hearty applause from the challenger faithful. 114 left to go. Trujillo way out high. They'll work at high post. Johnson and the shot by Weyerbaugh is good. Emmy Weyerbaugh, she's got four in the ball game. 54 seconds left. Brooken, Brooke Aikens needing a little bit of help there. And a 30 second timeout called. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Avista Utilities and our friends from Pentacle 365. Use your big rewards to save on gas and use the app to order crispy, crunchy chicken and sides on the way home and have them ready to pick up and go. Pentacle 365. 49 seconds left in the ball game. Challengers on route to staying tied with the Sutherland Bulldogs for first place in the Far West League. Coquille will drop to two losses in league play and will be in third place, but a solid third, I should mention. This just their second loss of the season. Driving to the hoop, Trujillo, a foul on the play there. Brooke Aikens whistled for the personal. Izzy Trujillo, she has two in the ball game at the free throw line, shooting two. First free throw attempt is good. It's a 20-point game at 54-34. to 34. Second attempt on its way. She gets that one to go. Out of backcourt, Coates. Can't make her way through. Steal by the Red Devils. Wirebot, Nelson. Salazar. Johnson making a move to the hoop. Shot off the side of the glass. Heavy traffic there. Last touched by Coquille. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be Challenger basketball. Sam Hammer to Coates. And a near tie up there. Falling up the floor to Aikens. Coates going to let time wind down. And that's your ball game. The Challenger girls, for the first time in like ever, are 6-0 in the Far West League by defeating Coquille 54-35. We'll take a quick timeout, and when we return, we invite you to stick around for the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role campaign postgame show. That will follow these messages on TableRockSports.net. It takes meticulous planning. continuous monitoring and forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Tap Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. Look for me and shoot it to me. All right, let's go, guys. 15 minutes. Get your stuff. Bye, Mom. Have a good day, guys. I don't know what happened. Just next time, go a little slower. Okay, I get it. 
what you're going to do is you're going to take the line. Life is busy. Juggling everything can be overwhelming. We've all been there. So consumed with our own lives that we sometimes forget about what someone else might be going through. Ref, come on! No, ref! There's no contact! I'm straight up! That is a terrible goal. So keep it in perspective. Because we're all hoping for the same thing. To be respected for who we are and what we do. Remember, no ref, no game. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official. But you can only be one. Know your Welcome back to the Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role post-game show. Visit TravelMedford.org and learn more about uh, by searching Know Your Role to see how this campaign is working on changing the culture of youth sports for the better. The challengers came out on fire early in the ball game. Early on, Jordan Jones and Tim the Robertson both put the hot hand for the challengers. And as always, game after game, as we've broadcast them throughout the year, we've been talking about their stock and trade really being that uh, pressure defense that extends out to three-quarters court. And uh, it forced a lot of turnovers by Coquille. And when you combine that with the opportunities that gives you on the break, and then we saw some nice low post moves by Jordan Jones and this Coquille team, a couple of 5'10 players, but not that much more length than the Challengers had. And, and the Challengers doing a great job of taking care of business and uh, securing the win. Working on trying to get the uh, scorebook from the uh, scorer's table there. Try to get the uh, athletic director's attention. I don't know whether we'll succeed or not. Jordan Jones, by our count, had 16 on the ball game to lead all scorers. Timna Robertson hit double figures. Izzy McCauley, who was quiet early in the game, ended up with 12. And then we had Emma Coates for eight in the ball game. Grace McCauley with a field goal and four points for. Arce off the challenger bench. Well, I'll go ahead and wrap up things here. We got a boys game to get ready for. So that will wrap things up here for the girls broadcast. By all means, for all you Coquille folks watching down along the way, uh, go to tablerocksports.net. Go to the home page, and you will see on that home page a menu of games, and you will see Coquille boys basketball. Probably what we'll do is look to get that up and running here in about five minutes. Thanks for watching. We'd like to thank Cascade Christian High School Athletic Director Nate Maben for hosting the Lithia Superstore Game of the Night on TableRockSports.net. Our special thanks to head coaches Marty Stallard and Jeff Robertson. Our next Table Rock Sports production will come up in about five minutes. Again, the final score on the John L. Scott scoreboard. Cascade Christian 54, Coquille 35. For Johnny McCoy, I'm Jim McCoy saying thanks for joining us and have a great evening.